Let's make the bass from Unholy by Sam Smith and Kim Petras. You can download this preset along with over 175 other useful presets in my pack called Sounds You Know, now accepting PayPal. A link for that's in the description. So to get started, initialize preset. Yours might look a little bit differently because I have a default preset. This is a new feature of Vital 1.5 and later. You can set a default preset if, for example, you use basic shapes a lot. You can have that already loaded in and ready to go. I also have vibrato set up and my mod wheel is controlling vibrato. So anyways, for this preset, we're going to be using a saw wave in oscillator 1 and a square wave in oscillator 2. There it is. Now let's move these down two octaves, or negative 24 semitones. And then let's set the phase randomization to 25%. And then let's move these to two voices each at 2% detune. And I'll explain more about why I'm making these choices later. All right, let's hear how this sounds. Pretty cool already. Let's lower this down to one voice, and then let's bring in a filter. So for filter one, I'm gonna be using the dirty filter. I'm going to set it to 40% resonance. I'm gonna set the cutoff to negative 24 semitones. I'm gonna route in oscillator two, and then I'm gonna use envelope two to modulate the cutoff of that filter. So for this one, I'm going to add a little bit of hold time, 0.01. And then the decay will be 0.5. And then for the sustain, 0.25. Once you've done that, let's pull this middle point here to make it a steeper curve. Then drag that over to your cutoff. Right click on that modulation amount. And let's set this to 72. Now that's going to get you most of the way there, but I'm going to take it a little bit further. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the first harmonic of both of these oscillators. So you can go to the fourth keyframe on this where the saw wave is and erase that first fundamental. Then on your square wave, I think that's right here, you can drag down on that, erasing the first harmonic. Oops, looks like I got the wrong one. I think there are two square waves in the basic shapes. All right, there we go. Now let's put in a sine wave um, at the same frequency, negative 24 semitones. And then for this one, no phase randomization and just one voice so that our sub is in mono um, as opposed to being uh, split up like these two. Now, because of the phase randomization and detune, I think it's a good idea to add a compressor to tame some of these uh, sudden spikes in volume uh, from these uh, first two oscillators. So double click this to get rid of it. I'm just going to drag it down. Uh, you can raise the threshold to about negative 16. And then I'm going to lower the attack to about 15. And let's hear this. Let's lower the volume a little bit. And now since uh, oscillator 1 and 2 are going through the effects, and they're getting louder. Um, I actually forgot to set this direct out. We want the sub completely direct out, bypassing any of the effects. But if we do that, it's skipping this compressor, and the compressor is making these two louder. So we need to compensate for that and set this to 0 0.9. Now let's check it out in the advanced tab. We can monitor our frequencies here. Looks like that fifth harmonic is getting pretty loud, but it doesn't get louder than my fundamental, which is what I want. So that sounds good to me. So anyways, that's pretty much it for that sound. Now, underneath that is a sub, and that sub is very simple. It's just this second waveform um, right here. And uh, we can add some legato, a little bit of glide time, and then some bend. You can increase how much that the pitch bend wheel will bend your sound. And since, um, you know, there's lots of bends and stuff in the sub, uh, I can make it easier for myself by just doing it manually. 
So I can do stuff like this. So let's talk about this sub. The sub is really simple. It's just the first three odd ordered harmonics. And so if I'm playing a C, this frequency is C, this is G, and this is E. And what does that make? A major triad. This sub, you'll hear it all over the place because it sounds so thick and loud. The reason for that is because of its perceived loudness. So perceived loudness is loudness over time. And I can demonstrate that to you. So which one sounds louder? This one or this one? Obviously the longer one sounds louder, but they're actually the same volume. The reason for that is because perceived loudness is loudness over time. If it's louder for longer, it will seem louder. So we can apply that even to the microscopic level of a waveform here. So with this waveform here, you can see it gets to peak amplitude and it stays there for longer than let's say a sine wave here. So as a result, this waveform sounds really loud, really thick, really beefy, and it's only three harmonics, so it leaves a lot of room in the upper register or in the middle register for your other instruments, making this a very popular choice for subs, especially in genres like hip hop or pop. So anyways, let's talk about, let's bring this back to our sine wave, since we're already getting the frequencies and the upper harmonics from these, Oscillators, let's talk about why I chose many of the things that I chose. We'll bring in our filter too. So when I first heard this bass, the first thing I noticed was how wide it was. And that's why I use two voices here. Now, uh, if you have two voices and you have some detune or something different between those voices, you're gonna have one signal in one channel and one signal in the other, which is maximum width. Now, if I were to add another voice like three, now that third voice is in the middle, it's mono. So it's actually not as wide sounding. And that's not what I was hearing for the sound. Now, I should mention that I don't think the sound from the original is as wide as this. Now we were able to bring it back in a little bit by making this first harmonic mono. But uh, what I think they did is I think they used, they did something similar to this but they used a plugin like um, Ozone Imager. In the Ozone Imager, you can split up the frequency spectrum into four bands and then control the width of each band individually. So what you could do is you could narrow the lowest band um, to mono, and then um, as you're moving up, the sound gets wider and wider. Because very rarely will you have very low sub-frequencies um, in stereo. And one of the reasons for that is because this frequency right here is the loudest thing in my mix. It's all the way up there. So I want to be able to predict how loud that frequency will be. I don't want it to be jumping all over the place because of phasing issues between my two channels. So anyways, you could do it just by uh, having this sub here but you're gonna have a slightly better effect by using a third-party plugin like the Ozone Imager. So now let's talk about filter options. In this preset, I use the Dirty Filter, and I'll explain why. So in order to demonstrate the differences between these filters, uh, I'm just going to run a sine wave through them. So here's the sine wave by itself. It's just one frequency right there. Now, this is it with the analog filter. And it's a little bit hard to hear with just a sine wave, but you can see it's adding these harmonics. Now let's compare that to the dirty filter. Pretty similar. Ladder filter. Pretty similar as well. Now you'll start to notice more differences when we add some drive. So let's just add in about five dB of drive. And here's the analog one again. Here's dirty. So you get a lot more drive from the dirty filter. There's more distortion in the dirty uh, filter by default, but especially so when you add more drive. Here's the ladder. So 
So the one that stands out the most among these three, to me, is that dirty filter for its distortion. Now, if you wanted a clean sound, uh, you could use the digital um, filter. And this, hopefully, will add no harmonics at all. And it doesn't. So now if I want to add harmonics, I could add drive for the digital filter and get some pretty unique distortion from this. You'll notice it doesn't have that same natural curve um, in the order of the, uh, or the volume of the harmonics like the other ones. Let's turn it up all the way. So that's a pretty unique sounding drive that you're going to get from that. And keep in mind how much distortion you're getting from the filter will also depend on how uh, hard you're pushing your sound through it. So if I turn this all the way up, I actually will get distortion without any drive from the digital filter. Quite a bit of distortion, actually. So that's also really important. How much uh, signal you're putting through that filter is important as well. So anyways, why did I choose the dirty filter for this preset? Well, it's pretty simple. We learned that that dirty filter gives us a little bit more distortion in the form of some added harmonics. And when I was trying to figure out where to put the cutoff or how much to modulate the cutoff with envelope two, um, I was noticing that it was kind of hard to find that sweet spot. Uh, at first, it was too dark. It wasn't quite as bright as the original sound. But then when I moved the cutoff further up and up, um, it didn't quite sound the same. It sounded like it was letting too many harmonics in. So then I switched to that dirty filter, and it immediately sounded a lot more like the original. So anyways, I hope that's helpful. Um, I hope you enjoy the video, and thank you for watching.